what's going on guys welcome back to this video so again today we're doing a hack the box video and to cover or to continue what we started we go to tracks cyber apocalypse and today we will be doing control room control room is a kind of medium difficulty buffer overflow challenge um, so basically what we're going to do we're going to spawn the machine uh, make sure to download the files and the description is not, isn't that relevant, but anyway, we'll read it. After unearthing the crashed alien spacecraft, you have hacked your way into its interior. Nothing seems particularly interesting until you find the spacecraft's control room. Filled with monitors, buttons, and panels, this room surely contains a lot of important info, including the coordinates of the underground alien vessels that you have been looking for. You decide to start off by booting up the main computer. You hear an uncanny buzzing like noise and then a monitor lights up requesting you to enter a username. Can you take control of the control take control of the control room? Okay, so I'm using hack the box machine. I don't want any problems running the binary, so that's why I'm using hack the box machine. If you want, you can also use hack the box machine in browser built-in machine if you are subscribed to the VIP. A membership they have here somehow okay so what are we doing what are we going to do so I downloaded the challenge files so obviously we have the uh, control room which is the binary and the library files so what you are going to do the first thing is to play a bit with the file understand how the binary works so we go ahead and we say control room we start the binary so it greets us with a statement to enter the username so again here we are taking user input so let's say test are you sure about your username choice we're gonna say yes and here we have a couple options this is the control panel or the control room and these are your options as you can see the options uh, are dictated by your role so right now we start with the crew so obviously crew cannot do anything as you can see if we choose to configure the engine we enter one nothing happens two check engine nothing happens three set root nothing happens so obviously the crew won't do anything so other roles as you can see here let's go up wait okay so technician so obviously there are other rules here we have to figure out we are greeted only with this one by default crew and we cannot do anything if you enter zero as an invalid option the program will stop and exit okay so it's time now to take a look at the source code so we use Ghidra to navigate let's first start with the main function so with the main function here we define a couple variables not all the variable names are clear as you can see they are uh, named using this naming convention local 10 local 14 so on and so forth as you can see here we are greeted with the username choice and then we use fgets right we use fgets to receive the user input but before all of that there is a function called user underscore register that gets called and we have setup as well let's first navigate to setup so in setup we define the main variables among them is the current user as you can see the current user variable is a global variable that's 256 bytes and contains the username along as you can see this is 256 bytes and it is assigned to now two is the crew uh, that corresponds to the crew as the role okay so by the, that's why we are, we were assigned the crew by default here as the current role because it does that right off the bat using the setup function so back to the current user variable it's a global variable 256 bytes 
contains the username, the length, and the role. Okay, now let's go to user register. So under user register, we define the again the variables. If we scroll down, here we ask the user to enter the username, and we use read input function to store 256 bytes into the local 118, which happens to be the current user, by the way. So as you can see, this, here we copy the user input into the current user variable. So here we have the current user size is 256 bytes. And by default, it is assigned the current, assigned the crew role, as we saw in the setup function. Now, if we go back to the main function here, so setup was called, user register was called. And as you can see here, we see a confirmation about the username that has been selected in the registration process controlled by the user register. And lastly, we see user register successfully and we have else. So if the above didn't get accomplished, we call the user edit function. So what does that mean? It might, this means that there is somehow a way to skip all of this and go to user edit. Let's get, take a look at the user edit function. So this is the user edit function. And in the user edit function, we define a new size for the username. Remember that the username is controlled by the current underscore user variable we saw earlier defined at the setup. It is 256 bytes in size. Here in user edit, we define a new size for the username. As you can see here, they are making some controls. Cannot be larger than the current username. And then enter the username. We use fgets. And we have this interesting one, memset. So in memset, we set zero as a role to the username. So zero is the um, crew. It is the crew, uh, sorry, it is the captain role corresponds to the capture role. So basically, if we are able to call the user edit function, we'll be able to define a new size for the username, and hence, we'll be able to switch from um, the crew into captain. So only captain is allowed to change roles, as you can see here. We tried to uh, activate some options. As you can see, only captain is allowed to change the roles or to do other aspects, captain and technician. So how to, let's go back. So how to go to user edit. Let's go back to the main function and see how we can control the input process so we can skip the registration process and go all the way to user edit. So go back to main. All right, okay. So obviously if we enter more than 200, or if you enter 256 bytes or more, okay, we might be able to skip the user edit because the in the setup, if you go to back to setup, the current user is 256 bytes, okay. So we're trying to enter, assign the variable user or the current user name more bytes than it is intended to have or to contain. Let's see how this will work. So to do that, we're going to use GDP. So GDP dash Q control room. Pattern creates 256. So run, enter the new username. Ah, now new username size, let's say it is 256. Enter new username, test 5. And now we are captain. So we successfully called the user edit function. And we were assigned the zero role, which is the which corresponds to captain. Now captain can do everything. 
let's go back to the terminal now we can change roles move on between move through uh, move between roles technicians crew um, or stay as captain now for every option here there is a function for example view root and set root go back to Ghidra and we can check these out so view root also we have scroll up we have for other functions configure engine check engines okay so if we go back here now we have to find a way okay guys have to find a way or we have to find a vulnerability there, are, there is a vulnerability of course the city of the challenge there is a vulnerability in one of these functions you have to find which functions so basically if we explore set root and view root there won't be anything so let's go and explore configure engine so we go to configure engine and this is the configure engine function now the bug in this code here obviously we don't have time to explain every single line of code guys so the bug lies here so as you can see we have three variables this one local 28 and local 20 now obviously uvr1 is defined here as an integer okay sorry this one and this integer corresponds to the engine number okay and as you can see here guys we take the user input and store it in uvr1 and perform a control on the variable okay if it is less than four in length and then what we're going to do we're going to allow the user to enter uh, the values for the thrust and the mixture ratio the mixture ratio and the thrust are stored in local 20 and local 28 let's go back here and find the connection so yeah of course we input the value of this variable but again it is controlled by an if statement it has to be less than 4 to be able to set the other variables local 28 and local 20 which hold the value for thrust and mixer ratio so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead with the flow and set the value of uvr1 to be less than 4 to be able to set the mixer and thrust but the problem is here as you can see guys we can control the end of it so local 28 as you can see and local 20 there are no checks on these which means we might not have um, a complete buffer overflow but we have what is called out of pawn out of bound rights out of bound rights if you are able to write beyond the start or the end of a memory buffer so here the start is uv uv uva1 this one uvr1 which is the engine number but the end which is the mixture and thrust are completely controlled by us and there are no checks on them so obviously we are able to write beyond the end of the memory buffers that's OOB and that's what we're going to exploit all right so back here now we know what to do we want to abuse this functionality configure engine so to do to be able to do that first as you can see guys we have to do a couple things in the exploit code first we have to account for the fact that we need to be captain okay so in the code in the exploit code here let's go back with exploit code we start with it so in the exploit code this is the exploit code we use pawn tools okay and here we use an oob function to control the process so if we start with the exploit code, as you can see, first we sent 256 bytes as the username and as the size to be able to be um, the captain. Okay. After that, we need to start the exploitation. So basically, the um, configure engine is better be done from the technician role. So we switch the role to technician and we start abusing the um conf uh, what was the function name configure engine so as you can see here we set the value for the engine number to be beyond four and then we control both the thrust and mixture so here after we're able to do that 
the, is, the gist of buffer overflow guy is to leak addresses. We want to leak memory addresses. Specifically, we want to leak the addresses of the library and the system function. So to be able to do that, we use that function, free. So go to free, where is the free function? We need a function that we can use here. What is the, f oh my God, I'm really lost here. Where is the free function? So there was function named free, it disappeared from here. Maybe if you go back to user edit or user register, you will find it. User edit. Yeah, as you can see, this function doesn't have a lot to do. So we use it in order not to break the code. And the issue is, uh, we want the leak to leak the memory addresses. To be able to do that, we want to leak them through printf. Okay, that's why we use free. And that's why we need the function or the code exploit code to skip directly to user edit. Because if we don't skip the execution of the code from the main function to user edit, we won't be able to switch the captain and we won't be able to call the free function. And hence, we won't be able to use the printf to leak the memory addresses. So to leak memory addresses, we used, as you can see here, a string payload, format string payload, to leak the memory addresses. And here we leak them. Okay. Now, as you can see, God, we used the free function and we used the goat of the exit. Now I'm going to refer you, there are a couple things that might be not uh, so, not, you are not so familiar with. I'm going to refer you to uh, these articles, they explain a lot about the GOAT overwrite, which what we did in this video, global offset table. And of course, this article explains out of bounds, right? I'm going to refer to these two articles to be able to get really uh, along with this code. So if we execute the code now, so provide the IP address and we provide the port. As you can see, first we perform preliminary check on the binary. And X is enabled, but remember that, as you can see, the uh, other protections are not enabled, especially the this one is enabled as partial. So we perform the connection, and here we leak the addresses. Remember that we leak the addresses by virtue of this function, the free function, because it doesn't do anything. And it's, it's easy to use these functions to leak memory addresses, along with the printf. So after we leak the addresses, we will be able to, let's go back. So after we leak the addresses using these lines, we'll be able to um, provide non-valid options and skip the user edit and hence link the system function which will execute the code here or shell on the um, binary. So this is the flag. Now, what is this? This is the library address. We need the library address here. As you can see, this is how we extract it. So basically, this is the library address. And the library address is released after we actually learn the addresses of other uh, functions in the memory stack, including the write address, which is defined here. So that's how we perform out of bounds. I'm going to put the link of this code in the um, description so we're able to read it um, try to read these two articles okay and then go back to the code and read it obviously guys this is the most important function oob out of bound that performs the uh, process so after you execute the code you'll be able to land the shell and get the flag so that was it guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm gonna see you later